contradictions. Fuck my life. Dex. Yeah, buddy. All right, buddy. Yeah. I think I do too much of anything. Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Harry. And I'm Richard Ricardo. Richie Rich. Welcome to Dead Decks. No yeah. playing that today because we're doing something different. Yeah. We're doing, you know, different, all right. Dumb shit's different. Yeah. Uh, we're going to play not an entire game of Hyborian Gates, but just a quick run through overview. Yeah, not even close. Yeah. We've had people mention multiple times that they want us to play this thing, so we are going to. And we have been. Multiple sessions, we've played a few games against each other. Yeah. Uh, we started with starter decks. Those are almost useful. U useless. <laughs> not use Almost useful. Not even, they're not even almost useful. Uh, they're damn near unplayable. You yeah. literally have cards in them that you cannot play. Yeah. Uh, there's so many faction-specific attachments that that doesn't work. So we've made our own decks. We've tweaked them a little bit. Uh, and got relatively happy with them. We know that Harry wins every game because uh, we've now figured out roughly how to deck build. Yeah, we spent a solid 20 minutes doing this uh, <laughs> deck building exercise. <laughs> That's a lot of time investment for our standards. It took more time to dig the cards up than it did to put the decks together. Uh, uh, a secret is powerful cards and ultra rares. Yeah, you stick with the ultra rares. Power creep is... Or the, I don't know what power you call ramp. that. Power, power ramp, yeah. Between commons and commons are damn near unplayable, most of them. Uh, so what we figured out is Harry's deck does a lot better with uh, pretty heavy control elements. I tried to do a creature rush and it doesn't work. I'm almost all creatures and I can't hardly beat him because he's got too much wipe the board control. So yeah. Uh, anyway, we've been asked for this game for a while. We're going to still do this relatively quick because the reality is you're going to have to revise the rules with whoever you play with. If you want to play this game, You'll need to sit down, do some errata, do some revisions. Out of the box and out of the rule book, it's almost unplayable. Correct. And we do have rewritten rules that Richard has put significant time and effort, almost a year and a half's worth now, <laughs> into getting these ready. And that they should be available as it, this time this video goes up, which may be who knows how long from now. Yeah, we'll plan on doing that. So uh, just briefly on how the game works and the victory condition. So you can see we have these out in the middle. These are dimensions. Uh, so these are actual locations that you're transporting your, your troopers to and your monsters. Uh, the goal of the game is to control a certain number of those. It depends on how many players you have in the game. So for two players, it's five. Uh, so there's six of them, and you need to control five of them. Control means you have a trooper sitting on five of them at the end of the turn. Which we'll explain turn flows in a minute. So if you do that, you win the game. Uh, now, we actually have both agreed after playing this for a little while that that basic mechanic is pretty cool mm -hmm. and works. Uh, uh, it's pretty neat. Some of the things they've done where you can move around and you things you can do to, to vie for control there, they work pretty well. So, anyway, let's get into the turn. So, the first, con the first of 75 confusing things about this fucking game, there's a turn sequence where you do things simultaneously, and then there's player turns. So you start the master turn, and then one player does theirs, the other player does theirs, and then you end the master turn, and then you start another loop. So, probably should go into setup first, two board setup. So start with the gate, start with the creature. Yeah. So to set up, you first play your dimensions down. Um, all players select one trooper, any trooper from their deck, and any gate. Put them in play. Uh, this is the ready area here. So all um, troopers and monsters have to sit in the ready area for one turn before they can be transported onto the field. Uh, so you get to do that when you start the game. Uh, so each player also places a pyramid counter, which we didn't do. Those are here. Uh, we'll go over colors and why those matter. <clears throat> For now, you'll notice we're both matching the primary color on our on our gate. Uh, so uh, after that, shuffle your deck, place it face down, and draw seven cards. We've already shuffled, so we're gonna draw. We didn't stage this. Nope. Because uh, it really doesn't matter. Just want to do a couple of turns, enough to explain what the hell's happening. And per the way I built this deck, I got nothing but <laughs> troopers. Um, Alright, so that was our setup. So your master turn, the main turn, starts with uh, you draw one card plus one additional card for each dimension in play you control up to four total. Um, 
and you both do that simultaneously. So uh, I don't think it's anything mentioned about skipping a draw on the first turn. And your second simultaneous phase is uh, you can play one gate with a pyramid counter. I don't have a gate in my hand. Ugh. I do. You must have a lot of gates. And some gates have special abilities. Both of mine currently do. Uh, the one on the, the red one over here. Monsters in the Chaos Dimension can move one or two dimensions. Gate self-destructs four turns after one use. Yeah, that's a good one for your deck. Yeah. So Harry's running a, uh, a Chaos Monster themed deck, which we'll show you what they do in a minute. Um, I'm running just big fat monster deck. Oh, you didn't put a thing in. Oh yeah, thing. my other gate allows me to draw an extra card if I control the dimension, the blue dimension, the Atlantean dimension. Yeah, all right, so now we do the sequence and figure out who goes first. I don't, we don't need to roll a noisy die. Uh, you have the, the, the person with the most pyramids goes first. Correct? Yeah, yeah, the rule book says whoever has the most of these <laughs> in their possession. Uh, Harry doesn't own any, nope. so I would go first every time. Uh, we've been rolling a die, so but Harry, you can go first if you okay. want. Uh, and then we're into player turns. So those are the, the three steps that happened in the master turn. And you redetermine that sequence every time. So, uh, Harry, you can do your worst. So uh -huh. I can read through them and you can yeah, just do them. Let's do that. Uh, so on the player turn, your first step is you can play up to five pyramids on any of your gates. So this is what they call overloading gates. Uh, pyramids are basically how you generate, we'll think of it as a resource that can transport your troopers and monsters. Uh, so this is the point in the turn where you can do that and overload them. I decline to do that. When you do that, we'll just go really briefly. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you would put your pyramid, your stack of pyramids on whatever number that the rule book in the back of the rule book tells you to do. And that's basically your countdown timer until it blows up. Uh, when it counts all the way down, it's going to explode. If you don't overload them and you leave them basic, they'll stay there forever. Right. And you can overload up to four, correct? Uh, that's correct. Place up to five total pyramids. So yeah. you can do four more. Right. But that's going to blow up at the end of your turn. Correct. Uh, so that's the time to blow it all up. Yeah, which is how I plan to play this deck. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't work well that way at all. So, uh, anyway. Um... So, yeah, you can overload. That's your first thing. Uh, you stack your pyramids up. And now your second step is you can play uh, attachments on any of your uh, troopers that are out in your ready area. And I don't have any attachments. All right. So. Well, this is where you get to the big fun. Now you can move, transport your troopers. Uh, and I was thinking that you get to play troopers before that, and, but you don't. You don't yeah. do that at the beginning of your turn. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and bring, and you can, when you bring them into the dimensions, they can come in. That's a little complicated too, where they can come in at. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do our best to explain that, because this is probably the most convoluted thing in right, the game. So I'm going to bring mine into this guy. <clears throat> so the way these pyramids work is, it'll generate a different number of resources and allow you to move to a different range. Um, depending on the color. So this is blue, this is Atlantean, this is an uh, Atlantean gate, Atlantis gate. So this single pyramid, since it matches its primary, it can generate two. Uh, you can move two creatures to Atlantis per turn. Uh, or it generates one to move a creature to either of the, uh, of the dimensions on either side of it. It cannot move a creature any further than that. And it's a primary range of three. So you can do two here or one to either of those. If you want to move somebody outside, uh, you've got to have a pyramid that matches the color of the outside. So if Harry wanted to move to the Gaian dimension, he would need a green to match the Gaian, and then he could only do one per that. Yeah, and then so, you would be overloaded as well. Yeah, you'd be overloaded and then you'd be counting down to destruction. So he could have, though, on his turn, he could have put one of every color that this isn't directly connected to and fired people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, 
That's really the confusing part about how this, oh, I took your main pyramid, <laughs> but that you're generating two for here and one for there, but you can't go outside of that. That's Correct. what you need to remember. And I've, I've seen some how to play videos and I think that's been explained incorrectly or gotten convoluted. So, uh, all right. So you moved your guy to the Asgard dimension. Correct. So now the last part of my turn will be dropping monsters, correct? That is correct. So combat would be initiated if you had uh, opposing monsters and troopers on the same dimension, but we don't. So now you can play troopers and also again attachments into your ready area. Uh, yeah, Drop two big them. fat boys. Well, one fat boy and one that can move to a dimension without a gate, which is pretty cute. Yep, and now, so your last two of your player turn, your last couple steps are discard down the seven cards in your hand. I'm good to go. Uh, and move your overloaded stacks. Good to go there. But you don't have any, so. All right, so now we're still in the same master turn. Now it's my player turn, so. I can play pyramids and overload, um, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do another green. Uh, I'm gonna do a red, a yellow, and a blue, because I just want to demonstrate this. That's five. So I'm now max overloaded on that gate. And I'm looking at my little chart. So this goes on the one now that I've max overloaded. Uh, now this is really dumb because I can't <laughs> transport. Yeah, that's actually really stupid. Will we pretend as though this is not my first turn? Right. <laughs> Let me go ahead and drop all these in play because this is just for demo purposes. So they all have to sit in the ready area, but uh, explain this is the way I built my deck on purpose. So <laughs> uh, these are all troopers. The problem is Harry's deck can do very explosive, mass destructive things and wipe out what I think I'm doing that's cool. So anyway, this is what I would have done. Uh, let's say that I had done this on the first turn and this is now my second turn. So at the beginning I would have overloaded my gate. So I have uh, two that are green. I didn't really need those, but so I'd move a person here. Uh, I'd move a person here. I'd put somebody here. So that was one, took one to do that. I can actually put two there. Mm -hmm. I'll put two there, one here, one here. Uh, I did do a yellow and I did a red. So. That was how I designed this deck to work, is to just do a mass rush. Uh, that would be my move character turn. So then in my combat turn, if I had anybody sitting where Harry has anybody, they'd fight, but we don't. Uh, and then that would be it. When I got to the end of my turn, now this is going to blow up. So uh, this actually gets to one of the main rules we wanted to point out. Mm -hmm. There is a rule buried in the fucking rule book. Uh, I can quickly even tell you what page it is. <laughs> uh, so it's on page 25. It's called Unsupported Cards Rule. The total number of troopers or monsters a player may have in each dimension is equal to the number of active pyramid complexes. So that's what they call a gate once you put a pyramid on it. It's now referred to as a pyramid complex. So cards in the ready area do not count against this limit. It only counts these guys in play. If a pyramid complex complex is destroyed, the player must immediately reduce the number of cards and dimensions to within this limit. Immediately. Uh, I.e., if a player had four pyramid complexes, he could have up to four troopers in each dimension. So, what it doesn't say, but I assume you figure out from me reading that, that's super important, does it go to zero? Um, since it doesn't explicitly say no, we're assuming that it does. So, what would really happen if I did this scenario, this blows up at the end of my turn and instantly everything wipes off the board and I just wasted my time Yeah, and my whole hand. Um, and then I'm going to screw you over even on top of that. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would do that anyway. Yeah. But this was a good way for me to demonstrate uh, the, the big rule that we don't know how to handle. You'd have to determine, do you want to treat that as though it goes to zero? If you overload these and you want to make a rush deck, you want to be aggro, uh, when your gate blows up, you're, you're wiped. Now I could have done one less. So I could have not put another green. Not put another person here. You know, still drop five and be sitting on two instead of one. Um, then that would have went down to one at the end of my turn. I've got 
you know, I hope at the end of the turn I could uh, still win. But uh, yeah, so that is the big. I don't think I've seen anybody else who's done a playthrough video comment on that rule, and I can see why it's only mentioned one time. Yeah, it's two or three sentences buried near the end of the really <laughs> lengthy big rule book. So. Uh, Something else we didn't mention that probably should is, you know, each class has an innate ability that uh, gives them some kind of advantage, generally speaking. Yeah, that, uh, except for poor Hyborian, yeah. which says generally <laughs> they're just better than the other guys. Yeah, they, <clears throat> um, they just have big dudes. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest advantage of Harry's, uh, the chaos, is they can do something called dimension walking. So, that doesn't, of course, the, the rulebook doesn't tell you exactly when that occurs or how that occurs, <laughs> but... Uh, what that means is when they're out on a dimension, once during a turn, they can move one spot to somewhere else. So uh, that's a big advantage of his is he can focus in, get his energy in, get drop a bunch of people on one dimension, uh, and then he can scatter them out. Yeah. And I have other dudes like this when they can move directly into a dimension by itself. They don't even need a gate. So especially if I have one that's far away now, I'll, in this case, it wouldn't necessarily matter, but if I was hanging out down here on the end or something, I could just drop him in in the middle somewhere. And then he can go walking around too. Yeah, since the way we've been playing this is, since it isn't spelled out, it's that during your phase where your movement phase, uh, which I believe is what it's called. Yeah, you can do that in any order. So if you want to go ahead and transport one person out here, then you want to walk a chaos monster, then you want to transfer, no transfer another. That's how we play it. Yeah, you can do those in any order. Um, we got power surge cards as well that acts a lot like instants, and we treat them as such. Uh, there's, there's vortex cards that are played only to, in combat, right? Yeah, and then power surges can be played at any time, and many of those are extremely powerful. Yeah, power surges is where a lot of the power creep is. Yeah, a lot of cards that do do some awesome things. Yeah, I do have one in my hand that I shouldn't even have in my deck. That's okay. <clears throat> Duplicates effects of any vortex tactics card. Yeah, how, how did that get there? I'm not sure how that made it into the deck. <laughs> I don't know that I have any power vortex cards. That wasn't on purpose. Yeah. So, but yeah, power surge say that you can play them anytime. It doesn't clarify what anytime means. And as far um, as we know, it would just, they would go into a stack, I suppose. You we've, know. Yeah, we've treated it like the magic stack because who knows? Yeah. Timing is one of the many things that are convoluted in this rule set that yeah. it doesn't explain. <laughs> Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I think this is probably good enough for yeah. explaining this shit. Ask questions if you don't know, we'll, we won't tell you. Yeah, I mean, I'll send you my version of the rules, but again, mm -hmm. you're going to have to modify them in some way anyway, to however they suit you, because there's too many holes. Um, one other thing to keep in mind on the abilities of cards, they often use the word discard, and if you read closely and you look at the whole card pool, you can tell that they frequently mean sacrifice. They don't mean discard from your hand. So, uh, some of them it's very clear that discard means when it's in play, you sacrifice it. The modern word would be sacrifice. I don't even know if Magic was using the word sacrifice in 95. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, just, I was just reading my dude here. It's, I probably shouldn't even have this guy in my deck, to be honest. Because my, my deck is very Power Surge heavy. And this guy states, his while he is in Dimension, Power Surge cards are null and void. Oh. So he should probably just hang out in my ready area for <laughs> Yeah, you said you're gonna screw me over, but yeah. no, you wouldn't have with him and I would have screwed myself. Uh, so yeah. I am running two of him. Yeah. As well. Uh, <clears throat> that's your card limit on decks. We didn't go through every single thing in the rules because you just you know, some of these things you can just read. But yeah, you can have two of any given card. And with the way the uh, the power curve goes from ultra rare to common, uh, that makes deck building a little difficult. Yeah. You only have two. Yep. And there's somebody like this one, you can only have one in the deck. One per deck and one use per game. So Yeah. Yep. Now this wasn't uh I think we're about good enough, aren't we, Harry? Oh yeah. This wasn't your standard playthrough, but we pointed out the main things you're gonna to need to address if you wanna play this game. But we did determine though, is that this can be fun. Yeah. We actually had some fun games. And you know, you um, go to you go on eBay, you can buy a case of this for what, less than 100 bucks ship? Right, 100 bucks for a case of 10 booster boxes, but there's even cheaper than that. Like, they, there's a guy selling four booster boxes for 30 ish shipped. Um, so, yeah, you want to get get your hands on a bunch of this. It's easy and cheap. Uh, the art is cool. And, to, you know, to play, if you want to build a decent deck, you'll need a big card pool because, again, you'll want to use mainly ultra rares, and those are going to be hard to come by. 
Yeah, that's one thing we figured out quickly. I'd already bought a fuck ton of this game, and I went and bought more just because of that, because we were deck building and missing a lot of the cards we wanted. We were building from a master list that I created that has all the abilities of all the cards, which is something else I guess we can share. Yeah. Because I think I made that. There's not one out there. Uh, but it's a nice, easy way to deck build. Yep. So, anyway, yeah, if you have questions, we, we will answer them as best of our ability, but we can't mind read what what they were doing when they threw this game together so sloppily yeah we jokingly say there was one guy that was actually taking this fairly serious this was over all over a weekend and the other guy was a stoner who ate dominoes all weekend <laughs> and, yeah definitely in the naming conventions you can tell it reeks yeah. of that uh, the, all the the way the rules are written there's literally typos and inconsistencies things that are uh what's the word i don't know what's the word uh, <laughs> But yeah, there's things in the rule book that just both can't be true. Yeah. Uh, and grammatical errors in card text. So contradictions. Contradictions. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've said that it was pretty obvious they made this whole game in a weekend. Yeah. Fuck this magic shit's hot. Go. Make some. We got art. Fuck, let's go. <laughs> uh, but I, I think they stumbled into this, and I believe this was ahead of their time in terms of these are physical locations yeah. that you're vying for control over, and that's how you win the game. I think that's actually a neat concept. Yeah, the thing's I'm, rough as fuck. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's a big old turd. It needs to be a lot of polish put on it. Yeah, but the the underlying basis of it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I think we both agreed that's what they got right. The concept they got right, and the art's cool, and everything else is all fucked. Mm -hmm. The the way they've written it, the card balancing, it's it's got a lot of issues. But yeah, they're still you can still have fun with the game. Even the size of the set, what is it, 517 cards or something? Yeah, a bunch of junk filler. Yeah. You've got ones like this, uh, a gate with no ability. Uh, every dimension has five or six of these. Ugly fucking AI art. Uh, <laughs> and they have no ability and just have a different stupid-ass name. Yeah, Microsoft Paint uh, <laughs> art. Gotta love these little pyramid tokens. I'm now a proud owner of hundreds and hundreds of these fuckers. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, I think that's good enough. Fuck, how we do? Eh, good enough. Uh, fuck, yeah, buddy. I, I think we'll say that.